Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, this is All Flight RC. Uh, this is just a very quick uh, tutorial on how I did my antenna upgrade to my Spectrum DX6E. I have had a few fail safes in, in the past, um, probably ranging to about 120 meters. Um, so hopefully, this will vastly increase my range. Anyways, these are all the components that I've used, they're all from Banggood. Um, I'll put links in the description below to them. What you want to start off by doing is removing your batteries, battery tray, any um, foam little bits in there, any spaces or whatever, and the actual tray itself just unplugs from the from the transmitter board inside. Just be very careful when you do this. Just don't don't force it and don't try not to break anything. Basically, uh, it sure will come apart pretty easily, as you'll see. It comes out nice and easy. Then you have to re remove uh, seven screws, six coarse thread in the main body of the transmitter, and the top screw is a fine thread which goes th into the antenna spike, if you would like to call it that. Uh, next, you have to put the control into the center configuration. Um, I, I find you, you can do it both ways, but you I just find it easier if the controls in the center position to take it apart and put it back together basically because everything's just you just center everything and pop it back together again. Now if you see I am I am actually pulling on the on the aerial which is actually connected to the back end of the control with the handlers. Um, so just bear that in mind when you're taking yours apart. But again, just just don't force anything. It it will come apart. Just a bit of wiggling and jiggling, and you'll you'll get it apart eventually. When once you pull it apart, just make sure you don't pull it apart too far, and just just unplug the old antenna wire, which is on the left hand side there. That one there. I'm just going to tuck my old antenna under some wires inside there. It's not going to get in the way. It's not going to short anything out. So just tuck it away in there. You know, it saves you from taking it out. There is the new aerial cable with the RPSMA connector on the other side. I'm just unplugging the switches so I can get the front half of the transmitter out of my way. It makes it easier to work with. I've had to uh, take my control apart once before because I had a, an issue with the power button not working properly. Um, so I've, I've been through all this before and I, re I noticed that there was actually a hole where I'm cutting out there which was just hidden by a sticker basically so I think that was for a, intended for a, another switch or another knob or, or whatever they might might have wanted to put through there, but uh, turns out that it's it's only just a little bit too big for the uh, for the RPSMA connector, but not too big that it's going to pull through when you tighten the nuts down. So uh, I think that was a, a good find. It saves me from drilling the uh, transmitter body. Just be sure to put the uh, lock washer on before you put the nut on. And then once you start to tighten the connector down, just be sure to use a decent pair of pliers or just, just don't don't hold onto the wire at the back. There is a smaller size nut at the back of the uh, RPSMA connector where I'm putting the pliers on there. So just make sure it doesn't slip and, and crimp the wire. You might damage it somehow. And then just nip it up nice and uh, relatively tight, not not too tight that it cracks the plastic or breaks the connector, obviously. And then uh, literally, it's just the reverse procedure to uh, reassemble it. Connect your switches back in. Uh, now comes the tricky part: actually connecting the little connector onto the transmitter board itself which is a bit of a, a fiddly job so I'll, uh, I'll skip through a bit of this and uh, save you from, from watching me struggle. Just 
just make sure it's in there nice and nice and firm. Obviously, just don't try and force it. If, it, if it's not going in, just just take it apart, take a look at it properly, and then uh, try it again. Right, when you're putting the controls back together again, um, just try and get your controls relatively central, and then uh, literally just just let it sort of find its way back together. And uh, again, do not force anything. If if something is if it's not going back together, just pull it apart slightly, make sure you got your, your gimbals lined up properly and then uh, it should all just pop in back nicely together for you. And there we go, nicely back together. Just check your gimbals are working and you've got some sort of spring tension on them. If you don't then probably one of the, uh, the holders in, inside is not lined up properly. Once all your gimbals are lined up again, just uh, push it over to the mode that you're on, or whichever setting you're on. I'm I'm on what is it mode two, so my uh, left hand throttle is not sprung. And then basically just replace the stopper, close the lid, and then put your screws back in. Just be aware that your top screw for the aerial is the fine thread, and then the rest are all coarse thread. And again, just don't tighten these screws up too tight because it is only plastic, so you might strip the threads quite easily. Um, just replace your battery tray, your foam spacers, and stick your batteries back in. I do actually stick the aerial on first, just in case the transmitter does power on, because it's not good to uh, run your transmitter with the aerial off. You might overheat your transmitter. So just bear that in mind. And uh, yeah, that's it. So uh, good luck, please uh, like, subscribe and comment and any questions you might have just uh, go ahead and ask and uh, we'll see you again, so cheers.